This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by iFixit. Introducing the all new ProTech Toolkit to give you the compact and complete toolkit for all things DIY. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout. And by DigitalOcean. Simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit digitalocean.com and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code KNOWHOW in the billing section to get your $10 credit. Today on Know How, mics and headphones for podcasting. Welcome to Know How, it's the Twitch show where we build Ben Break. And upgrade. I'm Father Robert Palace here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And uh, welcome to another Monday edition where for the next 30 to 45 minutes we're going to be showing you some of the things that we've been playing with so you can take them home and geek out on your own. Brian! Padre. We are continuing our podcast series. We do yes. this every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, clearly we're into podcasting. Yeah. It's kind of what we do for a living. I'd say you more so than me, but also we have quite a... Uh, Collection. Collection of headphones and equipment here. I mean, the collective of uh, money here is probably, what would you say? Uh, it's like $1,000 worth of product here. Yeah. yeah it's oh, not, yeah. not super bad. We, no. I mean, you just go a couple feet over to another office. <laughs> mm. <laughs> then you can find the really nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to show you some of the inexpensive slash higher quality, more expensive options for both microphones and headphones, both in studio and in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only way we could really do that is to sort of bring in our collection, the gear that we actually use. So all of the things that we're going to show you today are bits and pieces of gears from different vendors that we've actually purchased, like mm -hmm. with our money. This is not demo gear. Uh, and nope. if, if you want our honest opinion, this, this would be it. This is tried and tested gear, and some of it I haven't tried or tested, but I'd be more than willing to do, do so. Oh, I, I, might, I might have something for you here. What? I, just, I don't know about that. Oh. All right, but let's, let's go ahead and kick it off, because the first thing we want to talk about are microphones. We have said several times on this very set mm -hmm. that when you are starting a podcast, it is far more important to get your audio right than your video. Absolutely, because even if the video is decent, the audio, if the audio sounds bad, it's going to make the, nobody's going to pay attention to the video. Right, They'll just be right. done with it. And uh, unfortunately, I've seen too many attempts at a podcast where someone will, they'll, they'll buy a thousand, two thousand dollar camera, mm -hmm. and then they're going to use like the <laughs> microphone that comes with their iPhone, and no, just or no. even like the microphone on the camera, which you know is an okay substitute, but depending on how you use it, it's probably not the best idea. Yeah, and, and even when people do spend a little bit of money on a microphone, like a, a blue mic, or mm -hmm. you know, one of those from uh, what's the Yeti? Is yeah, it like the Yeti? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. those are nice, but you have to consider what the mic is designed to do and what it can interface with, because you right. kind of want to plan for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for those folks out there who think that they just want to buy the most expensive thing that's in the market, that's one way to go. But I think the much better way to think about it is where do I want to be podcasting six months, 12 months, two years from now? Right. Because what you don't want to do, and unfortunately I know some people who started off in this business mm -hmm. and then had to buy like five different sets of equipment because they <laughs> kept outgrowing it. We don't want that to happen to our audience. No, no, no. But I, I'm guessing we'll have some tiers that like starter yeah. tier, intermediate tier, and then like just go all out. Yes, exactly. So let's go ahead and start with the starter tier. Now when we're talking about studio mics, we mean we want microphones that are actually going to be inside of a room. Mm -hmm. These are not, you don't want to set these up in a noisy hall, although no. you can sometimes use them there. They're designed to be plugged into a capable audio system. So Typically, something like XLR? Right, we want XLR. XLR is, a, it, you've seen it, it's that thicker type of cable and it's got three connections. You've got the tip, the ring, and the sleeve, which means mm -hmm. it's grounded, which means you can run longer distances without adding hum, without adding interference. Right. So XLR is our, is our interface of choice. Mm -hmm. More so than the interference, though, it's the fact that I can convert XLR into it, almost anything. USB, yeah. into lightning. Or um, even do like a Bluetooth, uh, a wireless connector to XLR. Precisely. So we kind of like XLR devices because we know that in the future we could continue to use them. Whereas if we buy, say, a USB microphone that 
can it be kind used of limits USB. you. Yeah, because a, a lot of the nicer cameras have an option for XLR, which I know the field camera we use has XLR. Um, and yeah, I think uh, the little DAC that I use at my computer also has a an XLR interface. Right. So let's kick it off. This this would be my first choice when I think about a decent starting microphone. I always start here. This is the mm -hmm. Audio Technica AT2020. Now, this is an XLR microphone, but um, it's it's incredibly high quality. I mean, this is a, a if you go to that link, uh, Alex, it's a ninety-three dollar mic, oh, and you can get it for even less than that. We're talking about something that's super starter. But I love the sound of this microphone. It is so pure. It is so sweet. Oh, it is a cardioid condenser mic. It's got a 20 to 20K hertz response. Um, and what that means is, first of all, cardioid is the pickup pattern. All microphones have a pattern around which they will, they will pick up sound. And that's that's like how you angle it, or that's how right. you that, direct that, it towards your voice? Precisely. You'll, you'll occasionally see a microphone that's marketed with a multi-pattern pickup. And what that means is you can like flip a switch and it changes that pattern. The cardioid looks kind of like a double kidney. So you've got this the shape that looks like that, hmm, right? Okay. And then there's hypercardioid, which kind of flattens it and extends it. Those are like shotgun microphones. Right, very directional. Very directional, super selective. Now this particular one is what's called a, a side firing or side address microphone. Some people will Try to talk to it like this. But That's not how you're supposed to do it. The element no. is actually here. So <laughs> it, it, uh, what they've done is they, it's a, it's a cardioid. So the pickup pattern looks like that, ah. but then they've blocked off the back so that the pickup pattern is much smaller in the back and then much larger in the front. Oh, so how can you tell? What, does it have, say which front and back? Well, uh, anytime you you look at a microphone, they'll. If it's a decent company, they'll actually <laughs> show you a picture of the pickup pattern. So check your manual. Though. Check the manual yeah. and also look for their frequency response. 20 to 20,000 means that this microphone will be able to register any frequency between 20 hertz, which mm -hmm. is incredibly low, and 20,000 hertz. So that's a pretty broad spectrum. Broad spectrum. It's, it basically encompasses everything in human hearing. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it, there are certain frequencies it can't record, but that doesn't really matter because we can't. We hear them. wouldn't be able to hear uh, unless you're doing a podcast for dogs, right? Dogs, yes, yeah. dogs, okay. dogs. Uh, the other thing to remember about this is it is a condenser microphone. Now people will get into <laughs> religious wars about condenser versus uh, dynamic. I think there is a ham radio segment where Bob <laughs> goes into great detail about what a condenser mic is, and that was more for like a ham uh, application, right. but. You go explain to me what, what okay. you would so use it for. So when you've got a condenser microphone, you actually have two sets of electromagnets, mm -hmm. right? Or one powerful electromagnet and like a rare earth magnet. Mm -hmm. There's an actual element that needs power. It needs this. This needs what's what's called phantom power, 48 ah. volts, or it won't work. It okay. just won't give any sound because you have to be able to charge up that element. Now the advantage of using a condenser is it tends to be much more accurate. Mm -hmm. It will give you the sound that it actually hears. So you'll get low, you'll get high, but the sound you would hear off the recording is the sound that you would actually be hearing if you were there in person. Versus a dynamic microphone. A dynamic microphone uh, does not require phantom power. Mm -hmm. The element is actually much lighter, so it, you can, it's, it's much more sensitive, but it tends to skew everything down, which is why we would tend to call mm -hmm. dynamic microphones uh, big bottom microphones. They add that bass uh, that people like. Okay, and uh, so you've mentioned phantom power. What's the danger of using phantom power on a mic that doesn't need it? Yeah, if you run phantom power to a dynamic microphone, mm -hmm. um, over time, actually, if it's a cheap mic, almost immediately, but with a good mic, over time, you will actually destroy that microphone. Ah, uh, so, so no good. Yeah. It, um, it does sound kind of scary. Like it, it's it power coming from the depths of the yeah, phantom. Yeah, and I've actually learned Mm -hmm. uh, because I run a mixed environment, I have some uh, phantom power necessary microphones and mm -hmm. I have some dynamic microphones. Right. So anytime I'm using equipment, when I finish, I flip, always flip the phantom power off because I don't want to accidentally plug in a dynamic mic and blow it out. Right. right. Okay. So cool. that's tip, quick tip. Um, tip. Again, less than $100. So if you were going to have a three microphone setup, you could have these three mics. They have great sound rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, they're side firing, so you could have them just on the desk like that, mm -hmm. you know, in a little stand. Uh, and you could, including the mixer, for $350, you could have a super high quality 
audio setup. And that would last you if you plan on doing this as a hobby or as like a profession for a long time. Though. Right, I mean, yeah. these, these last forever. Now, one thing about all mics, uh, they don't like being dropped. Just <laughs> But why I? I've seen you do that all the time. You drop go hashtag diva, and then you drop your mic. And then I catch it because yeah, you yeah. Uh, when you <laughs> drop a mic, uh, be it a condenser or a dynamic microphone, you are breaking something. Oh. And we have mics here in the brick house, PR40s that have been dropped too many times on purpose, and they yeah. just sit down in a box <laughs> oh. because they don't sound right anymore. They've been burked. They've been burnt. They've absolutely been burnt. Okay, so that is our that is our low cost option. I would suggest you get that because. Um, it's super expandable, and you will forever be able to use mm -hmm. an XLR microphone. Now, if you wanted to spend a little bit more, we have a gold standard here at the at the Brick House. Uh, oh yeah. What, what would what would that be, Brian? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to find. Hmm. Oh wait. It's you mean one, oh, yeah, right that. here? Yeah. How about that? Which actually, this looks very similar to the uh, Audio Tech. Yeah, actually, let's let's take this out because these are both capsule microphones. They will look similar. A, a lot of the designs look similar, and that's why a lot of the mounting accessories are kind of universal mm -hmm. for you know any 50 millimeter type device. These, I mean, look at that. Let's let's put them down like that. You could mistake these for one another. It, just one is a different color. Right. But these are entirely different microphones. You would not want to point the Heil at yourself like you would the audio Technica. No, because this is a side address. It's side firing. Mm -hmm. This is a front address. It's front firing. So you have to talk into the top of this microphone, whereas here you have to talk into the side of the microphone. Right, right. And it, so the nice thing about the Heil, too, is that when we're doing shows like on Twit, we still have noise going around in the studio. But as long as you're talking straight into there, a lot of it is blocked out. Exactly. It's, it's very good at sound rejection. Even better than the 2020, the high LPR 40 is. But we always have to remind people, too, that it should be like this. And if it's off to the side yep. or if it's off to this side or too low or too high, it won't hear you at all. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people have actually asked us, why don't we use labs on all our shows? Because we use labs for any show that's on this set, mm -hmm. for anything that's on the living room set. But we do that because there's no really good way to have one of these PR40s. If we could use PR40s for know-how, mm -hmm. I would use PR40s for know-how. They oh, sound yeah. better. Totally. Sound so much better. And again, because this is a dynamic microphone, you're going to get a better response and you're going to get much better bottom. That's yes. why Vio uses this for broadcasting <laughs> because when we listen, we kind of yeah. like the lower frequencies. It is fun. Uh, when I first started working here, I was playing with one of those mics. And when you have the headphones on and you're talking into the mic, it just sounds really nice. And you, you kind of like, you. it makes you want to talk a little bit deeper. And yeah, I like playing with the Hiles. Yeah, yeah. Now, now this does have a 28 to, I think it's 18,000 response. Mm -hmm. So it's slightly narrower than this. This will do... 20 to 20,000. This does 18 to, uh, eight, what is it, 28 to 18. Mm. So you can't get quite all the way down and you can't get quite all the way up, but the range that it does cover sounds heavenly, and that's why we use this. Yep, yep. Now, uh, if I had... Uh, you know, <laughs> just like See, that. See, that's the best of both worlds right there. <laughs> I mean, you look cool and you get great audio. There's uh -huh. no... <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're going to try I can't, that. I can't tell if he's excited to see us That's or if the, he's just trying okay, to talk to us. you know what? I think what? we're going to back away from this, <laughs> this area of conversation. I, I will say this. I would choose a Heil PR40 every time if everything was equal, but mm -hmm. not everything is but equal. But we don't have that apparatus that we could use on this show. Well, because this is a $100 microphone and this is a $350 microphone. Oh, right. That too. So, yeah. Mm. If, if you're a starting podcaster, uh, at some point get yourself a Heil because you're going to love it. But, I mean, consider the fact that for the price of one of these, I could get three of these and the soundboard. Um, if, if you're on a budget, it's probably going to be the 2020, not the PR40. All right. All right. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. All right. So those are our studio microphones. Again, we gave you a low-cost option. That's still pretty dang good. Right. Uh, we gave you a higher-cost option. I, I would really shy away from other XLR microphones that are selling in like the $40 to $60 range. Hmm. I've tested a lot of them, and I have not been happy with any of them. And some of them have come from big names. Hmm. Uh, it's just, you know, about $100 is that point at which you're actually going to get something that will last. Right. So I guess you have to kind of look at what project you want to do and if you're going to take it, how seriously you're going to do it. Or, or if you don't know if you, what you're doing is going to be popular, so maybe you don't want to have that initial in investment. I can yeah. totally understand trying to get something a little bit more budget. Um, but if this is something that you're serious about, it sounds like these are 
pretty good options for that. Yes, they are. And speaking of options, let's talk about some options that you're going to need for either of these mics, no matter if you get the PR40 or the 2020. Mm -hmm. The first thing you're going, you're going to want to get is an anti-vibration mount. Alex, I think we have a, a link for this one. They're not that expensive, They're like $10 or less, and you can get something like this. It's a shock mm -hmm. mount. So it isolates the microphone from the thing on which it's mounted. See how it's got right. that sort of elastic? Yep. Uh, you want that because you don't want vibrations to transfer up from the table or from the floor. Uh, most commonly, I hear vibrations from people typing, typing. when they're on their computer yep. and we have guests on. Yeah. And, and uh, they don't realize that even if they're typing really softly, because the mic is physically touching right. the desk through that stand, those vibrations come right up and mm -hmm. you know they hit the capsule and then we hear the little click, click, clack, 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 clack. Right, Annoying. and if you're like me and you're kind of clumsy and you bump into the arm yep. occasionally, it transfers immediately into the mic. Precisely. Yep, uh, just like that, exactly. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> we need to get one of those for the TD mic. We, we really do. <laughs> uh, now I will say these, some of those vibration mounts come with a pop screen as part of the unit. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be effective, especially if you're gonna get to 2020 because it's a side address. Right. But if you don't have a pop screen, go buy one. So they look like this. This this is actually a universal one. Again, super, super cheap. Mm -hmm. This is a gooseneck. You just tighten it to the stand and then you can position the pop filter where, wherever you need it. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a belt and suspenders guy. So when I'm doing live shots with the PR40 in my studio, it's just the PR40 and I have to be really careful about my plosive P's. You know about that, right? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. It's a <laughs> Which we have that, that problem on, on these mics all the time. Right. Uh, you have to be careful, but um, a lot of these mics, like the PR40, will come with some sort of pop filter. This mm -hmm. is pretty good, but it's not perfect. No. Uh, this is actually the pop filter for um, you know, a, another, another smaller mic, not, mm -hmm. not this size. But what I've often done is I'll use a PR40, and then I'll have that, the generic $5 one uh, here. So I'll have right. the, the big one right next to my mouth, and I, it, I could plus P all day, and it will yeah. make it to the mic. And one thing, uh, a side note that I thought was interesting is when we did our bacteria uh, experiment and we did all the different surfaces, <laughs> we found out that there wasn't any no. bacteria on the pop filter because there was like a coating of silver on yeah, it. Yeah, there's this antibacterial. This is a silver coating and uh, microbes won't, won't grow on that. So well, I thought that we was We thought it was gonna neat. be gross. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be super go gross because like we have told our guests and our hosts and stuff is like you almost want to eat the mic. Yeah. So they're spitting all over. And I actually lick my mic, so. Yeah, well, it's not just mics either. It's like keep people's keyboards, mice, you know, gotta keep you away from that stuff. And that's when Brian realized that working at the Brick House is a health hazard. Oh my God. This mic feels a little sticky. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, now that we've stated our preference for XLR microphones, mm -hmm. we know that there's a lot of people out there who like the convenience of using USB or another similar interface. The, the yeah. idea of just being able to go straight from the microphone into the computer and have that, that nice digital connection that's not uh, susceptible to interference, that's nice. Some of the cool stuff we saw in NAB, though, was stuff that you would plug directly into your phone. Precisely. Which I thought was pretty cool. Which is why we have this. Uh, go, go ahead and Alex, bring up that next link. This is the Audio-Technica 2020 USB Plus. Mm -hmm. They also have a 2020 USB-I, which will work with Lightning, but this one works with USB. It's just like the 2020. It, mm -hmm. Essentially, it's the 2020 with a USB interface built into it. Uh, so it's, again, it's a cardioid. It's the same cardioid pattern. Mm -hmm. It's the same frequency response, 20 hertz, all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Mm -hmm. uh, it's USB powered. It samples at 16-bit 44.1. So that's Redbook, CD audio, and stereo. Uh, you get mixed controls on the microphone itself. So if you wanted the super simplest solution ever. Right. Something that has the headphone control, the mic control, the volume control, all in one place that's USB connected. There is no device better than that. that okay. That's the one you want to get. The so this sounds like it would be a great option for like a mobile recording or something. Like right. you're not always in the same studio setup. Right, exactly. Uh, now, I want to put a caveat on this. Oh. I like it. I have one. I use it for, for when I'm on the move. And it is more expensive than the audio that we, uh, Technica that we previously were talking precisely, about. Precisely. But I mean, it's like $20, yeah. 20 to $30 more expensive. But what I would do is I would get the standard AT2020 and mm -hmm. then I would get a $100 Shure X2U XLR to USB adapter. And mm -hmm. just again, it's because it's more flexible. It means in the future, 
if I decide I'm no longer going to use USB because I want multiple microphones for my podcast, ah. uh, I can remove that uh, XLR to USB adapter and use it with my setup. With, mm -hmm. with this, with the 2020 USB. You're or limited the to the USB USBi. at all times. Yeah. Precisely. Right? I get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, let's move away from that because those are microphones that we would typically want to use inside of a studio space. What about microphones that you'd use out in the field. Then we'd just take the PR40 with like a harness, right? No, Brian, no, no. no. That video that Alex found is it's an aberration. Oh, you should never see it again. I want one of the ones that Dick no. Clark had on like the Price is Right. Just... No, no, we're <laughs> yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, now Alex, go ahead and show them my favorite field microphone. We got a link for, for this. This is the Heil PR35. If you've ever seen me do a Twit special, mm -hmm. this is the microphone I use. It's a lot like the 40. It's got that nice bottom. It's a dynamic cardioid microphone. Mm -hmm. It's got a 40 to 18 kilohertz response. So again, we lose a little bit of the bottom, right. but it, it's still pure. It's crazy expensive. It's $270, uh, but yeah. And you wouldn't use phantom power on this one either. Uh, no. Which I think we might have done accidentally once or twice. Yeah, that, that, that might. And that's probably the most commonly dropped mic that we have too. Well, Cause in the purpose. field. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count when you drop it and you catch it. Uh, uh, here's the thing, though. I like that microphone because we need it to interface with the camera. So it's XLR. Right. Uh, and it is a brilliant microphone. Bob Heil outdid himself with that because that is really like taking a PR40 into the field, but it's, it's far more durable. Right. However, if I was going to, to pay over $200 for a device that would be used in the field, mm -hmm. it would not be a regular microphone. It would be... This. Ah, I've seen this before. This is the Zoom H4n. I actually had the original, the H4. This is a, a, a field recorder, but it's a complete field recorder. So what we have here, these are capsule microphones that I can rotate so I can change my pickup pattern. Uh, but it does record in stereo. Oh, the other cool features about this is this is essentially like having a laptop in the field, but it's, it's dedicated to your microphones. I have two XLR inputs, nice. so I can input, uh, and I can also provide phantom power, so I could ride either the PR40 mm -hmm. or the Audio-Technica 2020. Um, I can choose my sampling rate. Do I want to record an MP3? Do I want to co record an uncompressed wave? Mm -hmm. uh, this takes SD card, so I can just swap out my media. Uh, as as I fill it up, um, and this is this is a complete recording studio in a, a really easy to use package. And then so with these mics that it has on here too, is it pretty much just everything in front of it? It's going to capture. Well, so uh, these are side address, uh, and I can change it so that it picks up this way, that way, uh, this way, okay, or that way. So I mean, that's that's what I mean by variable uh, uh, variable pickup. I can change it so that I have this mic pointing towards me and that mic pointing towards you, so that when I'm editing, I know I'm on the right channel and you're on the left channel. I've seen these used a lot for people who do interviews too. Yeah. And if they're sitting at a table like this, they'll just put it in the middle of the table, just start talking, and record the interview. Super high quality audio too. I mean, I've never been disappointed. They did have a problem on the original H4 mm -hmm. where the time stamping wasn't quite right. So if you were trying to sync it up with a video track, it would drift. Uh. But that's fixed in the H4N. Works much better. Um, and I've seen people mount these on top of like DSLRs. Okay. Uh, okay. Because they are really good pickups. And so is it going to pick up a lot of the room noise too? Or Not just... if you don't want it to. Oh. I, I can record up to four tracks. So I can record the two mics coming in for the XLR plus the two mics here. I like that. So again, that's what they use it on DSLRs for. They'll have this on top and then they'll maybe have like a, a wireless transmitter or receiver connected to this uh -huh. for, for their stick mic. Nice. Uh, and the nice thing that that does for the editor is if there's, a, if there's an audio issue, he could use these mics for a while and then go back it. to the, yeah. Ah, very cool. Nice. So, great setup. And actually, if you go to the, the link there, Alex, it's not that expensive. This is actually $60 less expensive than a Heil PR35. So for $210, you're not just getting a field mic, you are getting a field studio. That's pretty good. That's a pretty tempting uh, piece of equipment. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, this, you know, I don't use it that much anymore because I, I've got a crew when I go out in the field. But when I was still doing the whole one-man show, mm -hmm. this was indispensable because sometimes you just, you need to get up to someone real quick and get a couple of words. Right. And you don't want to be setting up the camera and then the receiver. <laughs> it's like, no, I turn this on, hit record, and ask my question. Perfect. Good to go. Cool. So, folks, 
That is the hardware, <laughs> not this. Stay away from this. This is bad. You don't ever want your microphone to look like that because people will laugh at you. <laughs> And then, and then, how do you do interviews? Do you have to like walk up really close to the just, next other you person? Kind of thrust your crotch at someone. Please speak into the mic. Uh, can you repeat the question for me? <laughs> no, no, never, no. never again. <laughs> uh, folks, when we come back, we this, are this actually. This is how, Brian. Oh, what's that? This is how. Wow, you just have to like hover over their okay, shoulder so, very uncomfortably. No, that's that's creepy. That's creepy. Wow. Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, we've given you the microphones. Next up, we're going to be giving you the headphones. But first. Let's go ahead and thank the first sponsor of this episode of Know How. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's one that we know. It's one that we love. Yeah. Because they help us to fix things, Brian. Uh, for all the things that I have broken, I have needed to use an iFixit kit to fix it. Yeah, yeah. iFixit is our premier source of tools and parts. Whenever we need to open something up, whenever we need to fix, upgrade, or otherwise destroy any of the equipment that we have here in the Try not house. to. You know. Try not to, of course. <laughs> uh, it's iFixit that we turn to, and it's, it's because they're not just a tool and part company. No, they have the repair guides. They've got the repair guides, and they're true geeks. These are the folks who understand that we're not happy just buying something. We well, want to know what makes it work. We want to know how to fix something if it breaks. Well, I just go to the site to look at the teardowns because I want to know what's inside of all the devices that I own. Exactly. Now, if you are a serious geek, if you're a maker, if you're a builder, if you're a DIYer, you owe it to yourself to try iFixit. iFixit is your complete DIY repair solution. From their 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with lifetime warranties, iFixit has got your repair needs covered. Now today, I want to show you this. This is their latest and greatest, the all-new ProTech Toolkit. It's gorgeous, completely reimagined design, just as rugged as the previous roll, but now it's easier to access. The tools are better, stronger, and better sorted. It includes a new 64-bit driver kit, which replaces the former 54-bit driver kit. It has a more durable case that doesn't have hinges or latches that might break off. Instead, it uses magnets to hold the parts and pieces in place. Now, more bits means fewer repair roadblocks. It means it's easier to use. It means it's longer lasting. And of course, it means it's cooler. Now, they also include things like, oh, I don't know, the Precision ESD Safe Tweezers, and including a pair of reverse tweezers by popular demand. They have a wide variety of plastic opening tools and picks to safely work on tablets and smartphones. They give you suction cups so you could disassemble assembly uh, 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 displays. And of course, they've got the metal, metal spudgers, which I love so much. And yes, I fix its own rubber-handed Jimmy pry tool for those hard-to-reach places. Now, the best part about all of this is that it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. And that's not just a, a you know, passe claim. They stand behind all of their hardware because they understand that when you're using an iFixit kit, you should have the best. Now, the best part is that uh, you, you will buy it, not just because we use it, not just because it's awesome, not just because you get all the repair guides for free, but because it really is the best toolkit that we have found in the DIY and maker space. They've been on our show forever. Brian and I have been using these toolkits forever. We think you're going to love them. So do yourself a favor. Grab an all-new ProTech toolkit and get going on your next fix, hack, or build. Just head over to ifixit.com slash twit and use the code KNOWHOW at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. Again, that is ifixit.com slash twit and use the code KNOWHOW. And we thank ifixit for their support of KNOWHOW. We're going to get back to the action. We've got some headphones that we want to show you. But before that, Brian, mm -hmm. at uh, Maker Fair, where you were my producer, yep. uh, there was a segment that we did that I was really happy with. I, I was kind of, I was geek squeeing. Uh, yeah, I think this was kind of a long time coming, right? Yeah. This is something you had already thought of quite a few times in your head. Many, many times. Yeah. I've, I've always wanted to score an interview with Adam Savage. <laughs> he is one of my heroes in the to in us maker all, space. Yeah. Uh, he is a true geek, and, and more than that, he was just, he a was a super cool nice guy. guy. Yeah. I mean, when we, so we went to Maker Faire, and then we saw the line, which extended for quite yeah, a ways for After just to talk. see Adam Savage, and he waited the whole time. It was probably about two hours that he sit, sat there signing, taking mm -hmm. pictures with people. Just, yeah, he, he could have been like, oh, well, you know, I was only supposed to be here for half an hour. I've right. been here for two. Like you do, but like nobody do. lines up. I, <laughs> oh, I can't. 
<laughs> That's true. when Padre gets angry and he <laughs> and drops the mic. the mic. Yeah. No, but we did make time for us, which we were absolutely pleased as punch. Uh, so without further ado, let's find out what Adam Savage had to say about Maker Faire. We have the privilege of being with the man, the brains behind Tested, one of the stars of the Mythbusters, and of course, inspiration to makers and inventors everywhere, Mr. Adam Savage. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thanks for having me. Now, there are people out there who don't remember a time when it wasn't cool to be smart. It wasn't cool to make things. It wasn't cool to, to make stuff. And I think you and your cohorts really changed that. What, what do you attribute that to? When did it become all right to, to create things? Um, God, I, you know, it wasn't part of our design to do that. Uh, I feel like Mythbusters came along at just this perfect time when making as a hobby and then as a movement was really ascendant. Um, and so we grew up alongside that movement, the DIY movement. And as I said out there uh, in my talk, I think we're at this really great moment when computing power and the economies of scale have made the ability for even the youngest kids to program and understand on a deep level machine learning and machine programming, um, as well as 3D printing and basic making, uh, that... that the inspiration of seeing a kid make something really viable. I met a kid who seemed like he was like 12 years old who had his own design for a watch, an interactive wearable piece of tech. Um, that sort of thing just grows exponentially, and we've been lucky enough to be a part of it. Of all the advancements that you've seen since, say, the start of the Mythbusters, from the Arduino and uh, programmable microcontrollers that are accessible to the regular people to 3D printers, what, what has been the trend that has excited you the most? Um, the, the, when it comes to translating things from the computer into a machine, the biggest problem is the CAD CAM pipeline. The translation from the person's brain to a computer screen in 3D, and then the translation from that to software that turns that into a path for a machine is really still incredibly primitive. And there are a lot of people like Neil Gershenfeld and Glowforge that are working hard to reduce that CAD CAM pipeline to zero. I think that's going to be really exciting when it becomes much more intuitive. Of course, Myth Mythbusters has ended its run, which has led to increased opportunity for you. Yes. But I'm not sure if some of the people out there understand how active you were even before the end of Mythbusters. You have been an icon at every Maker Faire. You have been a stalwart of every major con. And uh, you're, you're one of the fan favorites. What, what does this time hold for you? Um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, the kind of stuff that I did on Mythbusters and the kind of stuff I do on Tested, it's not very glamorous. I'm in my shop getting dirty, cutting myself, trying to make stuff, failing, succeeding, etc. Um, but coming out here and getting feedback from the fans, getting inspired by watching what other people are taking and running with is, is really exciting. And seeing it in different communities, like the cons, like Maker Faire, uh, even the, you know, the stage show that I take around the country, it's, it's, it is the closest I'll ever get to feeling like an actual rock star. Oh, I, don't, I don't think you feel like a rock star. You are like a rock star to, to millions of people who like to invent. Oh, let, let's leave one last bit for our audience. Okay. There are people in there who get discouraged because they try things and it doesn't work or people don't like it or they hear horrible, horrible comments from people on the Internet. Yeah. What would you like to say to the nascent maker, to that person who is just starting out or maybe that person who's been at it for so long and just can't find traction? Well, the thing is, is that when people get discouraged, they need to understand that everybody gets discouraged. In fact, it's not even like they get discouraged sometimes. It's every project will discourage you at some point. Whenever you want to take something and make it excellent, whenever you want to do something that's better than you currently know how to do, you're going to have to pour yourself into it. And when you do that, you make yourself vulnerable. And that vulnerability means that when things don't go right, it hurts and you feel it keenly. That's part of the process. That's actually not a bug. It's a feature. And it is making you a better person. You are learning more about how you tick. You are confronting failure in a safe environment and being able to push past it. Uh, look, it's no less distracting to me to be discouraged today than it was when I was 12 years old. I just know a little bit more about the fact that I just keep needing to make stuff in order to push past it. It's not going to go away immediately, and it's going to come back again. It's just part of the process. 
Mr. Savage, thank you so very much for speaking with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for years and years of inspiring people around the world. Here at Maker Fair, remember, failure is not only just an option, it's also part of the process. Well done. A oh, little nod from Adam oh, Savage was, there. It's a the bro end. love, man. It Not was bro that. love. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a great, great interview. It, it was, it was fun. And uh, the even better part is, the, we've had a little bit of communication. Oh. And because I, there's a, a couple of projects I would love to do with the tested guys. Right, right. Well, and you know, if uh, failure is part of the process, we are in the process all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we we are well in the process. Oh, yes. We live, have, we live in the process. Very used to that. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's, he's right because, uh, and this is one of the reasons why we listened to you, the, our audience. You told us that you didn't want to see so much of the projects that I have, uh, I've like, pre-recorded mm -hmm. uh, because you see just the successful parts. Right. Um, you'll see the montage <laughs> of me assembling a quadcopter, which, or, uh, you know, I enjoy because it's nice and neat. But right. people are like, it's discouraging because it seems like you get it right every time. I'm like, no. I feel like that coincides more with the uh, the soldering projects that we've done. Right. Because we have to cut it down so that people don't <laughs> waste their time watching it. And it looks like, oh, yeah, they got it right on the first, the first try. try. It's like, no, 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 no <laughs> not at all. No. I, 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 uh, it was funny because when someone the first told me that uh, they felt as if uh, I was doing projects that they could never do because they always mess it up. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring back the footage of the very first quadcopter we ever did, and I managed to crash that three times before it ever <laughs> took to the air uh, because, like, my wires were crossed and my right. soldering was messed up. And I'm like, that's part of the process. And those are the videos we love to watch. And, well, I like to watch, but I don't want—I don't like showing it to the audience. But now, right. now we will. Yeah, now we will. Well. Uh... <laughs> I'm thinking back to when we first started flying quads and how bad we were at it. But then, like, we've gotten comments of people saying, like, my quad doesn't fly like that. There must be something wrong with it. It's like, no, <laughs> no. it just, we practiced a lot because we like it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, uh, we will be bringing you all this goodness that's waiting in the background here. If you want to find out the proper headset for you to have, again, we're going to give you some less expensive options and some super high quality options. Stay tapped for that. But first, let's go ahead and thank the second sponsor, of this episode of Know How and it's DigitalOcean. Now, if you are a developer, if you're a designer, if you're an artist, if you want to have a portfolio, a website, a service, an app, whatever it might be, DigitalOcean is the easiest way, and I'd say probably the, the best way to get your project, your brilliance, your imagination online. You see, DigitalOcean is a different kind of service provider. They use droplets. These are containers, self-contained bits of software that allow your, your website, your portfolio, your server to run anywhere in the DigitalOcean cloud. Whether you're developing an app, a website, or working on that server-based project, you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. And that's exactly what DigitalOcean can offer you. It's already used by over 600,000 developers, including Twits Randall Schwartz, Aram Newcomb, and myself. With DigitalOcean, you can deploy and configure your droplets via a streamlined control panel, or you could use their simple API. You get to choose your OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD, and you get to select from one of the many pre-configured one-clicks like Drupal, Docker, or Node.js to get up and running quickly, or because they give you root access, you can build exactly the infrastructure that you want and need. Want servers running 100% SSDs in state-of-the-art data centers around the world. DigitalOcean is highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. That means that you could start with, say, opening up a server for a few hours just to see if it could survive in the real world. And once you know that it's the way you want it, go global. With the move of a slider, you could go from a single CPU and a single SSD to thousands of CPUs across the planet on thousands of SSDs arrayed to give you the most performance possible. They've also got an extremely active community, which is something that I really look forward to because it means that their customers are so satisfied with the service that they're willing to come back on their own accord and help the newbies. Folks, if you use DigitalOcean, it's not just a service, it's a community. It's so easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. They've got inf incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing with their servers starting at just $5 per month. And again, there's also hourly pricing available starting at less than a penny per hour. But because DigitalOcean loves the Twit Army, they're going to make it so that you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. 
Just visit DigitalOcean.com and create an account. Once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code KNOWHOW for a free $10 credit. That's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do for you. That's DigitalOcean.com. DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code KNOWHOW in the billing section to get your $10 credit for free. DigitalOcean, a better web awaits. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support of KNOWHOW. All right, Brian. Yes. So we got our audio into our computer, right? That's the easy part. We got we to gotta edit it. We got to make right. it you know, sound right. <laughs> now, hopefully you're not just using the speakers on your laptop because that would be just no that's no bad. that wouldn't be good or the uh, Apple headphones that you get when you oh, buy something like yeah, that yeah, no, no, no. yeah. Uh, we wanted to give you something a little bit more uh, now you know this because we both edit yeah and there are people who they'll like buy a pair of beats <laughs> and I appreciate the people that buy pairs of Beats because then I know not to talk to you. <laughs> but <laughs> wow. Sorry. But, you know, to be honest, when I first started working here too, I didn't, wouldn't consider myself an audiophile. Like, I never really had a nice pair of headphones until I started using some of the ones around here. Right. And you can't, once you start, it, you can't go back. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, for me, it's, it's not even that they're higher quality, because they're obviously higher quality. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, most of our podcasts are voice, so there's not mm -hmm. a lot you have to do to make voice sound good. Maybe no. add a little bit of bottom and take out some of the, the hiss and such. But if you're editing all day, they need to be comfortable. Yeah, and that's you, the thing. And it, you know, if you just so happen to listen to music a, a little too while you're doing it, then you notice the difference. So that was our criteria. We wanted comfortable, and we also wanted multifunction. We didn't mm -hmm. want a pair of headphones that would just work for editing. We wanted it to be comfortable enough to edit all day and then be used to watch movies, listen to audio, maybe even play games. Right. Right. So the very first one we came up with is this. This is actually my new gold standard. I had uh -huh. the M50. The M50s are the ones that we use here at the studio. Which I love. Which Super are comfy. Great. But this is the new Audio-Technica MSR7 and Wow. Okay. Oh, I haven't yeah. had a chance to use these yet, Padre. I know. I, I know. wonder why. Because Padre keeps them locked away. <laughs> so <laughs> selfish. Last time Padre had a nice pair of headphones, someone just took them. Was that me? No, no. Oh, okay. That's else. <laughs> well, that's why you have to lick them too, Ew. not just your mics. Okay, no, you know, I don't want to be disgusting all the time. <laughs> all right, so the MSR7s, of course, they are the higher end headphones. Actually, uh, Alex, if you go to that, that link, these are 244 and above. Uh, th these are actually more expensive now than they were when we showed these off about four months ago. What? Yeah, the, the supply is so constrained and they can only make certain uh, numbers of these. So this actually rose from about $210 up to almost $250. I know. So it's an investment, not just a pair of I wouldn't say no. that, but I will say <laughs> if you want if you want a set, yeah. uh, it's not like there's something coming down the line that's gonna blow this out of the water. There's right. a reason why they're priced at that. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So off the bat, this has everything that the Audio-Technica M50 had. It's it's light. It's got the padded headband. Here, put these put these on on your uh, ears. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the oversized cups so that rather than resting on your uh, your uh, your ear uh, lobes, yeah. it goes it's, around them, which is that's right. absolutely important. Like, I don't know if I have regular sized ears, small ears, but these fit perfectly over them. So. Yeah, yeah, and I it's like that it. it's that nice sort of. Uh, Tempur-Pedic material, so it. Yeah. And, and uh, the funny thing about this is, I thought because it had that material that it would heat up really fast. Because that's the case, though. No. Uh, so they've got something else, like some some material that they've added to help it breathe. Because yeah, when I look at headphones, they usually come in two different kind of materials. It's kind of I don't know pleather or whatever yeah. you would call it, and then kind of a suede coating, and that's usually what people would get if you really need like air circulating through. But I prefer that uh, material because it's just comfy. And then, yeah, it feels like it has Tempur-Pedic mattress material inside of it or yeah, something. Yeah. Of course, since it's a premium headphone, uh, they include everything like, you know, the little pleather pouch so that you can keep everything. And then they've got the different attachments. The, all the higher end headphones will have detachable cables for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, it makes packing them up a lot nicer because you can right. put this inside of a carrying kit uh, without having to worry about ripping off the cable. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is, and this is important if you're an editor, uh, 
have you ever gotten up and walked away? Oh, yeah, a ton and, of times. Yeah, you don't want to either pull the desktop off the table or pull your head back. Yeah, uh, and yeah. If you have the detachable cable, it will actually just disconnect. That's nice, because yeah. uh, so the ones that we have, which is uh, the ATH 50X, they, they lock in, so. which I have, like, it, the cord's wrapped around my foot when right. I walked away before, Ooh, and I ripped the, the cable no out. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, so they listened to their, uh, their audience, and what they did was they created a version that doesn't have the lock. Okay. Uh, precisely because people were saying they're so comfortable I forget I'm wearing them I get mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. the next thing I know my desktops on the floor yeah that's not good uh, they also include things the, the, the various cables so that you could use it as a straight 3.5 millimeter device just headphones uh, or you could use it with like an iPhone right uh -huh. it'll add the, the little microphone nice so yeah these are more expensive they are definitely on the uh, higher end at $244 but and you know this I mean if you are going to be editing for long periods of time mm -hmm. how comfortable do you want to be because uh, if you right. if you're willing to cheap out you can get a set that sounds good mm -hmm. for $80 but they just won't be comfortable all day right right and uh the nice thing about if you get a pair of headphones like this, you don't have to just use it for editing. You can then use it for listening to music. And because of the detachable cable, you probably a lot easier to throw in your backpack if you're going on a trip or something like that. Um, and I know that when I've bought more expensive headphones, they tend to last a lot longer yes. than some of the cheapies that I've had in the past. Yeah, and I, you know, just like microphones, this is one of those technologies where if you're willing to invest a little bit more you get a product that lasts a lot longer. Right. And in the, in the long run, it, it ends up costing you less because you bought quality. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the other specs that you're going to want to know, it uses a pair of 45 millimeter drivers that are actually, they're fantastic using uh, you know, neodymium magnets. Mm -hmm. uh, really good sound isolation. They're close cups so that if you want to isolate yourself from the world around you, this is a really good way to do it. Uh, pretty much everything that the M50 has, which I liked so much, except it's more comfortable. So again, if you can afford it, Pick yourself up a set of Audio Technica MSR sevens. Do you see the price coming down anytime soon? Um, they, I don't. They think just make more of them. Price is not going to drop until they release a new version. But even then, like the M50, from its release to now, has dropped maybe twenty percent. Yeah. What is the M50 selling for? Uh, you can right get now? an M50 for like one hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, so these are a hundred more than that. Yeah. That's very tempting. It's tempting. <laughs> it's tempting. a tough call. Yeah, we'll, All right, we'll we've, find got, something. we've got other headphones. We've got something because we know that some of you are not going to want to pay two hundred and fifty dollars for a pair of headphones. So we've got this. Now I know what you're saying, Padre. That's a gaming headset. <laughs> yes, it is. This is the Kingston HyperX Cloud Two, uh, and actually we're going to be using this again in, next week when we talk about gaming uh, desktops because this is a great gaming accessory. Yes. But uh, just like the uh, the MSR Sevens. The primary reason why I like this for editing mm -hmm. is because they are ridiculously comfortable. In fact, here, Brian, why don't you go ahead and put these this set on oh. while I open oh, up. The set that you just happened to have? I just, mm. I just happened to have it there. Okay. How about that? We use these at NIV. These were the headphones oh, that yeah. I had up on stage. Yes. Uh, and they are, I mean, they are ridiculously well, comfortable. Well, so I'm trying to think, like, even more than editing, what do you do sitting at the computer more than that? And it's probably gaming so for long periods of time. And that's the reason why. Because remember, one of the criteria we wanted was it can't just be for editing, right? Yeah. So this is I love a, this headphones. is an $88 headset. This is like a, less than a third of the price of, uh, of the other set. And um, it These gives are you, super comfortable. Right? Right? Yeah. And again, the, the cord is, uh, is, is not detachable, but the microphone is. So it does come with this microphone, so you can use it as a gaming headset. You simply open up this port plug it in like that and it's it's a really good microphone uh, but this padded headband plus the padded cups these cups oh, are amazing it's a 53 uh, millimeter drivers both USB and 3.5 millimeter operation which means this will work with your PC it will work with an Xbox it will work with a PS4 yeah see I I like that a lot because I bought the Microsoft Xbox one headset for my uh, Xbox when I'm gaming and stuff and it started, the headband starts to wear on me after probably a couple hours. Right. I probably, I shouldn't admit how many hours, <laughs> you know, straight I played, but uh, I could probably wear those all and, day. And that's why they've included these. So these Ooh. are the pleather 
uh, cups, but you can replace them with these sort of the, the fabric right? so that your ears will breathe a bit better. And I think uh, if your wife happens to be yelling at the background, in the background, she, she can distract she you can, more easily yeah, she, when you're wearing these. Yeah, rather than coming <laughs> up behind you and slapping you on the top of your head. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, USB, like I said, USB and 3.5 millimeter operation. It's got noise and echo cancellation on an inline DSP. So this control actually has a DSP in it. So it will do all the echo cancellation features in the headset before it gets to the computer. Cool. Yeah, so if you are one of these people who likes talking while you're gaming and you don't like uh, messing around with Echo, that's, that's a good way to do it. It also does 7.1 virtual surround, which, uh, yeah, please, more of that. Well, I, uh, I don't know if you've played Doom yet, but uh, if there's a demon sneaking up behind you, you need to know. And yeah, this I've, is a so good way I've, to do it. I've used regular stereo headsets for gaming, and then I've used like a 7.1. And at first I was like, how much can you really get that surround effect in just two, yeah. two drivers? Or, well, there was multiple drivers. But once you've had that 7.1 effect when yeah, you're playing you a back. game yes. in the virtual space, it blows everything else out of the yep. water. And in, <clears throat> if you're watching a movie or something too on your PC, I, I kind of prefer having headphones if it's just me. Yeah. So this would be a good, a good selection if you are an editor plus you do a little bit of gaming. Which I'm sure a lot of people do. Yeah. Why not multitask? Now, now one thing I will say is although I love how these sound and I love how they feel, they are not as comfortable as the 7s, as the other Technica 7s, and they don't sound as good. I mean, the mm. sound on the 7s is a bit clearer. Uh, these tend to be a bit more bass shifted because, I mean, they're gaming mm. headsets. so people, Right, so you want those booms you want and the booms. gunfire and all that stuff. But if you wanted something that was close to uh, Audio-Technica 7 uh, and yet gave you all the comfort... All the bells and, and whistles. ...and the gaming stuff... Do this, we have something like that? We do. It's actually the... Uh, this is the Kingston HyperX Cloud Revolver. This is their brand new one. This is, this is the one that just came out. In fact... I haven't even opened this yet. This is this is uh, sort of <laughs> an, unboxing. an unboxing. I need a sharp thing to get rid of this tape. Do you have uh, keys or something? Uh, I do not. Oh, to see this, this I've is... been told not to carry sharp things on the set, just in oh. case. Oh, hold on. That's, ah, ah. <laughs> Where's that? I, I could fit it if it kit. wasn't for my arms. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, we have nothing like that. They don't let us have sharp. Things <laughs> don't let us have sharp here. things anymore. Oh, here, this is this is kind of sharp. Uh, this this is actually uh, this is this is the most professional unboxing we are you'll so, ever witness. We are so professional. You don't even uh, right. There's one on the bottom too. Oh, I know. So they really didn't oh, want you getting in there. Man, I mean, don't they know we're gonna do a show without thinking about opening up boxes? <laughs> right, That's we what we get. So this is the Cloud Revolver. Uh, Alex, if you go to the, the link for this, uh, this is, a, is a slightly more expensive. So instead of $88, you're locking $119, $120. Uh, but for that, what you get are you get uh, most of the same features. So you get 55, 53 millimeter drivers, you get USB and 3.5 millimeter operation, just like you did with the Cloud 2. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, just like you did with the Cloud 2. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, actually, sorry, these are the, the next generation 50 millimeter drivers. Much faster response. Uh, they're lighter, and I tried a set of these at uh, one of the Pepcom events, and they actually feel really good here. Oh, that, you can let me head. try it first? Yeah, you get the honors. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, these look really nice. Okay. Ooh. Right? Ooh yeah, so uh, compared to the Cloud 2, they feel a little lighter. They ride a little lighter on your head. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't, there's not a lot of pressure on the top of my head. It, most of it is just as it's clamping down, which it doesn't feel like a lot of weight at all. And it's going to do the same features. It's got that uh, inline DSP, and it's also got the removable microphone. So, Which, which I've important. had, when I had a headset that didn't have a removable microphone, I ended up not yeah. using it Because, yeah, it's getting that thing out of the way all the time. Yeah. I, I, I would figure that most of the time this stays in the box, because people only break this out when they're, they're gaming. Right. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, people have asked if I would use this as my podcast mic. Uh, no. no. Uh, I would never use a boom mic as my podcast mic unless I absolutely had, had no to. other option. Like, it's the only thing I have. Uh, but, yeah, uh, if I had, a, had to choose between the Cloud 2 or the Revolver, and again, uh -huh. I'd be paying $40 more for the Revolver, I would take the Revolver. Right. Yeah. That, that color scheme would look really nice to that Acer Predator I have downstairs too, Padre. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to go disappearing again. I know it. 
Oh, okay, all right. So let's get away a little bit from the gaming and let's talk okay. more about uh, a, a, a head, set of headphones for people who maybe don't want to be tethered. Uh, this is a touchy, situ uh, touchy question because people mm -hmm. have asked me, what are my favorite wireless headphones? Uh, honestly, I don't use wireless headphones when I'm editing. Um, Neither not do a, I. Not a huge fan. Um, and that's just because in the past I've been bitten by really bad compression, uh, by mm -hmm. Bluetooth artifacting. Disconnecting, running out of batteries. Exactly. And when I'm editing, I don't want to be guessing if that's the headphone that's making that noise or, or is that something the source. in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I did find something at, uh, again, one of the shows, and they, they sent me a, a copy of this. Super, super comfortable. And uh, one of the wonderful things about this is they actually sounded incredibly good. This is the Plantronics Backbeat Pro Plus. Uh, these are Bluetooth, Bluetooth 4.0 um, with full control. So uh, I'll show you exactly what that means. But uh, I, I, I don't want to use hyperbole too much, but this might <laughs> possibly be, be, be one of the best headphones I have ever tried. That's uh, uh, wireless that's headphones. That's some big talk. I'm sorry, wireless headphones. Big talk coming from some guy who can't open the box. I know, I'm not <laughs> good with the boxes. This is why I don't it's do unboxing videos. Well, it's just we don't have anything stabby. There we go. I know. I will stab <laughs> things later on. Well, I mean, because when I get something new, I'm like, well, I've tried it. I, I don't want to open the box. It's, right. It's brand new. It's oh, so pristine. The presentation so is nice. sexy. So, you're, you, again, you get to be our official trier honor. Sweet. Now, huh. there are a couple of things about this. You have controls on the side. So these, those aren't just decorative. They actually, those are your control surfaces. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Volume, it's probably hard to pause. tell. I don't know if you have it, the overhead would help or not. Oh, the side shot. There, there we go, go. in focus. Yes. So, yeah, there's the phone. And then inside, that's actually a lot easier to just at a glance see which is right and which is left. So many times I've picked up the headphones and been like, okay, it's not there. That's not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, again, these will pair with Bluetooth. So if you've got Bluetooth, this will work just fine, and it's backwards compatible, although the best way to do it is with Class 1 Bluetooth 4.0. It's got active noise cancellation. Uh, it's got sag-mounted controls. It does this cool thing. Uh, uh, oh, she demo Whoops. <laughs> oh, I spilled water over here. In my excitement. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't know if it'll show up on the screen, but when I turned it on, it had... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, it does whisper control. So uh, you know how sometimes when you have a Bluetooth headset on and then it, it like tells you what's going on, but the yeah. volume's way too high? Yeah. This will actually kind of bring down the volume and whisper it to you. So it doesn't, it doesn't take you out of whatever you're listening to. You've got, you've got the noise cancellation on, don't you? I think so. There's a, a woman's voice telling me no connection to a phone. <laughs> But well, they feel really good. That's because you haven't used this yet. So they give you the dongle. This is the dongle. So if you don't have a US uh, a Bluetooth enabled computer, you can just plug this in. Oh, okay, uh, nice. But if you if you want to connect it to your phone or if your computer has Bluetooth, you you don't need this. That is pretty slick. And uh, they do give you the wired connection too for those people who absolutely don't want to use the wireless connection for editing because they're right. afraid of the artifacting. That's what I like about it. I can use this in multi-mode, plug it in when I'm editing, take it out and just have it on my ears when I'm just listening to music. That is very cool. Do they, uh, do they have it listed of what the amount of battery life is? 24 hours. You get 24 <laughs> hours of power off and it's smart. So if it's, if it's not doing anything, it will actually go into super low power mode. Ah. Uh, and uh, I, I actually had uh, but the review unit that I had before I bought these, I probably had it in my room for three weeks without charging it. Nice. Yeah. And, and th is there, there's not a microphone on there, is it? Uh, well, there is because it's got noise cancellation. So anything that has noise cancellation has microphones. And you can actually use that, but it's an open room microphone. It's not a directional. Right. So if, you were, if you're using them with your phone or something, you could make calls, I guess. Right. right. They're comfy, though. I like those. Yeah. Uh, we are going to do full reviews on all of these. We're going to be giving, uh, you're going to get one of the Cloud 2s. Um, I'm going to be playing with the Revolver and with the Backbeat Pro. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a you know in depth showdown. This these are our favorites, mm -hmm. but we want to show you exactly where each one excels. Cool. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, uh, if you want, you went to the uh, the web page for this already, right, Alex? Or well, maybe not. They are. Oh, for this one. Yeah. They're, uh, oh, oh well, so no, that's the back the Backbeat Pro. These are, uh, I put the wrong link there. Sorry. This is the Backbeat Pro Plus, Plus. which goes for two hundred and eighty dollars. Two hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah. 
It's a little pricey. Does that make it the most expensive pair that we've looked at? Uh, yes. So it is. Because the, the Audio Technica was 244. Yeah, so of all, all the headphones, the Backbeat Pro Plus is the most expensive. But it is really nice. It is really, really nice. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for this episode of Know How. Uh, we will be bringing you more podcasting episodes in, I think it's about three weeks, because now that we've got the basic equipment out for your video, for your audio, for your lighting, we're going to start showing you editing. And what are the proper ways to edit both video and audio? And we've got a special coming up for you because we're going to show you how to build your own streaming box out of computers that you probably already have. So if you've ever wanted to have your own channel, if you've ever wanted to stream to YouTube Live or Facebook Live, yeah. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. Cool. I've got an old PC laying around. Yeah, why not? Nice. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, now, don't forget, if you want to know about anything that we talked about, uh, if you want to get the links for all of the products that we've played with mm -hmm. or uh, find out where we're going to be when we do our next project, you can go to our show page, which is where, Brian? That would be twit.tv slash kh, and that's where all our past episodes live. And like Padre said, you'll, you'll be able to find links to all the headphones that we talked about today. Um, and also, Subscribe if you haven't already, so that way you don't miss a know-how. Yes, because you must know how. Also, you must know how to join our Google Plus group. Just go to Google Plus and look for know-how. We've got over 10,000 members in our know-it-all community, the Lakitas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you've got a question for a project that you're running, if you are an expert and you want to help people, right. or if you just want to show off your latest project, please join. Again, Google Plus, just look for know-how mm -hmm. and uh, who knows? Maybe your project will end up on the show. Or even if you disagree, like maybe there's a headphone headphones that we miss. Maybe there's something, a microphone that somebody would recommend over the ones we had. Mm -hmm. Let us know. And you could also let us know on Twitter. I am at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you can find me at Padre SJ. And uh, don't forget, we actually have a third member of our crew. We do. Our director. Um, director. Uh, Steven. Steven, the guy with the stick mic coming out of his pants. <laughs> he, this was actually the first show he ever directed exactly. back in 1936. He's an old man. Yeah, that's why he's so crotchety. Yeah. So you're going to find Steven on Twitter at A-N-E-L-F-3. That's an L-3. Uh, tell Steven that he really needs to get that mic out of his pants. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballasier. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go record it and listen to it. And spill water all over it. That was an accident. I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I inked.